This is Volusia Today, a public information radio program brought to you by the County of Volusia. Here is your host, Kevin Captain. Good morning and welcome to Volusia Today. I'm Kevin Captain with Volusia County Community Information. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Volusia Today is made possible by our sponsors, the Daytona Beach International Airport, the Ocean Center, Volusia Recycles, and Votran Public Transportation. Today I'm joined by co-host, community information, multimedia, communication specialist, and surfer dude, David Hunt. Good morning, Dave. And good morning, Kevin. How's it going? It's going. How was your uh, holiday uh, break? It was great. It, uh, it was great. The only problem was is, is we had a little problem with the, well, now we have a little problem with the washroom and dryer, mostly the, the clothes dryer. I think it's getting too hot because it like shrunk all my clothes after the holidays. I so think that I happened get at my one. house too. That, Did it? Yeah, I think that's a common problem going around this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a good one as well. I had some... Uh, Family from Maryland come into town. They're paddleboarders. It's my wife's, uh, it's my mother in law and father in law. It's my mom's, or my wife's mom and stepdad, and they're avid paddleboarders. So we had a couple good days of waves, and they were, and then it got kind of flat. So they're wondering what to do on their off time. We said, hey, you should head out to Blue Springs, put in down at French Landing. And they put the paddleboards in, and they called us afterwards. And her mom's like, I had a life changing experience with manatees. And I guess they were out there paddling around, and the manatee, a group of manatees kind of surrounded them and came up and put the, their head on the paddleboard. And she was just ranting and raving. And up in Maryland, I, they don't have a lot of manatees. For us in Florida, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of normal. You know, we know about manatees, but um, it was just a super special experience for them. And today, we actually have some manatee experts. We definitely do. We've got Volusia County Manatee Protection Manager and Marine Mammal Stranding Team Manager, Debbie Wright. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning. And then we've also got uh, Cora Betchum. She's the Director of Multimedia and Manatee Research Associate with the Save the Manatee Club. Good morning, Cora. Good morning. Hey, thank you guys both for for, for being on the show today, talking about manatees. This is the perfect time of year. Uh, and, and maybe before we get to Dave's story, I just want to ask, because I heard on Monday on the ocean side, there was a manatee that, I guess, beached itself, and uh, and then you found them, like, later on further south in the county. Can you tell us about that? What yeah, happened? Sure. So, um, initially, it beached itself, which is not uncommon for manatees to do from time to time uh, for various reasons. But we sent a member of the stranding team out there to check on it and report back to FWC. And while it was while he was monitoring the animal, it actually went back out into the water by itself um, and seemed to be doing OK. And then the next day, we got a report of a manatee over in New Smyrna Beach that was uh, floating high up out of the water. A lot of its back was exposed. So we didn't even realize it was the same animal at first until we went out there. Oh, and it also had a calf with it. So when we went out and did a rescue for that animal, thinking it was a possible boat strike, once we got it out of the water, we realized it was the same animal that had beached itself the day before. So at least this time when the rescue happened, the calf was with it, and both animals went off to SeaWorld Rehabilitation for care. Um, wow. And once mom is doing better, both of them will be released again. That's great. So you were able to identify it was the same manatee by what, just the surface markings, or, or uh, did you tag we them? We identify them by scar patterns. Okay. So this one had very distinct scar patterns so we were able to tell they weren't the same propeller animal. marks were they absolutely oh. <laughs> yeah unfortunately I, I feel like we should even like so you get a report so what is the actual man mammal stranding team in Volusia County what is what is that job I was unaware that we had a mammal stranding team in Volusia County so could you just tell us a little bit about what 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 that is yeah, so we have the Volusia County Marine Mammal Stranding Team uh, here because we work alongside of FWC for when it comes to manatees and Hub Sea World Rehabilitation um, Institute for uh, cetaceans. Um, basically, they're either in Melbourne or up in Jacksonville, so it's pretty far for them to get here to Volusia County. So we have our team here so that we can kind of be first responders and get out there and assess the animal and let FWC or hubs know what's going on. Um, and then they'll come down if it's a, in, in need of a rescue or a transfer, they'll come down with their rescue boats or their transfer trucks and we can get the animal the care that it needs. And so the, the stranding team, how many employees are on the stranding team and, and what's it, 
are you are you guys like on call all the time or how does that work so there's two of us that are actually with um, the Manatee protection program that uh, manage the stranding team myself and my associate and then the other team members are just um, Volusia County employees that volunteer their free time to be on the team. Um, we usually have two people on call every day um, to help out, uh, but myself and my associate are the ones that carry the stranding team um, on call phones. So we're on call all the time, 24 7, wow. <laughs> and ready to go help respond to any uh, sick, injured, or orphan marine mammals at any, any time, day or night. So I want to jump back to the beach because I've I've seen pictures and I've heard about these large groups of manatees that get on the beach su super close into shore, and people tend to be worried about them because it's definitely it's not something you see every day. What's going on there? Why are the manatees on the beach that close to shore? Yeah, so a lot of times we see this, especially in the summer and in the springtime. A lot of the times it's manatee mating herds. Uh, when they mate, it's a lot of males competing for one female. So, and a lot of times this happens in shallow waters or close to the shore. And the female will just get tired and need a rest and she'll come up onto shore. She'll actually beach herself on purpose. Sometimes some of the males will follow her as well, but they do have the ability to get themselves back into the water on their own. Their pectoral flippers are very strong and they can kind of just peck walk themselves back into the water. If the tide goes out during that time, they might wait for the tide to come back in, and that kind of helps them as well and assists them in getting back out to the so water. So I always wondered, like, what's the distance that they travel? I mean, if, if, we're, if you're seeing them in the ocean, are they coming? Uh, they're obviously coming through the inlets. Yeah, so they can go in either salt water or fresh water. Typically, they like the slower moving waters, the brackish waters, the more shallow waters, but they do use the ocean to get from one place to another. Uh, they are free to move about Florida waterways, so they can go pretty much anywhere they want. Um, in some cases, there was one, and Corey, you can confirm this for me, though, actually went down to um, down to the Bahamas, um, or over to the Bahamas. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> and then um, one actually went all the way up to Massachusetts, I think it was, right? Wow. Yeah, that was yeah. actually the one what Debbie was talking about. I think it was rescued off of Massachusetts or Rhode Island, was rehabilitated in Florida and released in southern Volusia County. I think it was in Oak Hill, maybe, or Edgewater. Yeah, so. And um, it was outfitted with a satellite tracking device and actually made its way over to the Bahamas, which that's very unusual. That had never been documented before, but it does show you how far they can travel. And some individuals that we know from Blue Spring, where I do a lot of work, um, they spend time in the St. John's River. They go out into the ocean. They've been seen all the way down in Miami or even in Georgia, depending on whether they go south or north and then return to Blue Spring. So some of them are definitely travelers. And so that's insane it do, is yeah, that's crazy do they do they live in pods or like do they live in little family groups like dolphins do or what how do they kind of um operate? they it, it varies so okay. it's not uncommon to see ones by themselves um or you'll see mom calf pairs a lot of the time uh or a couple mating herds obviously there'll be males just following females around throughout the season uh the mating season and then of course in the winter time they'll all congregate together around the warm water sources so it's like i said it varies <laughs> let's talk a little bit that a little bit about that i've seen it on the news a couple times what is going on at blue springs right now um, yeah, so Blue Spring is one of the major aggregation warm water sites for manatees um, in Volusia County and in the St. John's River. So um, when it got really cold over Christmas, um, I mean, it was cold for, for Floridians and it was definitely cold <laughs> for the manatees. Um, you know, we had about an air temperature of 27. The water dropped into the 50s. So um, manatees really cannot tolerate. Um, temperatures below 68 degrees for a prolonged period of time. So that's when they come to these warm water sources. So we had over 600 manatees um, wow. congregating um, in one day at Blue Spring, which is not a record yet. Our record was um, 721 in a single day last season, but we're getting close. So it's uh, definitely an experience to see that many in one place. That's amazing. That is amazing. So let's jump back to a uh, uh, marine mammal in distress. How can somebody tell if a if a marine mammal is in distress, and then who sh who should they call? Because I would have no clue on who to call or 
I, what it would even would look like, especially if I saw one on the beach, I'd be a little worried about that. True, and then I also I always also wonder that is it is it FWC or or, or you know, there are a couple of different yeah. sources or resources to be able to call. Who should they call first? Um, to make it nice and simple for everybody, uh, if they see a manatee or marine mammal or pretty much any wildlife that they think is in trouble, uh, if you just call the FWC hotline, they will reach out to whichever organization needs to be contacted. Okay. So that FWC hotline is one eight 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 four zero four F W C C or three nine two two. That's good information. How how what are some signs? How can we tell? Um so well I will start off by saying when in doubt give them a call and describe what you're seeing. Okay. And then they can let you, they'll decide whether or not a, um, somebody needs idea. to go out there. Yeah. But uh, things that you can look for, it's winter time now, so we'll, we're looking for animals or manatees with uh, cold stress symptoms. So if you know the water temperature is below six, well, say below 70 degrees, and you see an animal out in those waters, uh, if it's looking lethargic, um, not really moving around too much, staying in one spot, if it has any white lesions on its face or pectoral flippers or tail, that's kind of like the equivalent to our frostbite for them. So you definitely want to call those in. Or as mentioned before, if you see a manatee and it's floating really high up out of the water, uh, that's preventing it from being able to submerge, to get away from boats as it, uh, if they might be coming towards it or to get the vegetation that it needs. So call those in as well. Um, I don't know. Calves, if, the, if you see a calf by itself. Um, Good time to make a call. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Or of course, if you see something stranded on the beach, you know, again, mm -hmm. that's something. Sometimes they strand themselves because they're exhausted from a mating herd. It could be another issue that they stranded themselves for. So that's another thing. Um, like elevated respiration rate too. If you see a manatee that's surfacing um, a lot, um, if it's in one spot and not moving around a lot, but takes a lot of breaths, um, that's a sign of distress, can be a sign of distress. But I agree with what Debbie said, you know, whenever you're in doubt, call, um, and then a biologist or someone, you know, nearby who's trained to deal with those kind of things can assess what's going on. Excellent. We're talking with Cora Burcham with the Save the Manatee Club and Debbie Wright. She's with the Volusia County uh, Manatee Mammal Stranding Team Manager. So we'll take a quick break, uh, take a breath, really, and then when we come back, uh, take a little deeper dive into what's threatening manatees uh, today. Stay with us. Are you looking for a new adventure? Come on down to the Marine Science Center in Ponce Inlet. Watch as our staff cares for sick and injured sea turtles. You can also explore our marine exhibits, touch some stingrays, visit our gift shop, and stroll through the Seabird Sanctuary. Afterward, you can visit the Ponce Inlet Lighthouse. The Marine Science Center is open every day but Monday. I'm Will Roberts, your Volusia County tax collector. Times are changing and so are the online options in your tax collector office. Some people still prefer to walk into one of our branches to pay property taxes or renew a vehicle registration. However, more than one third of people are completing these transactions online from their computer or phone. We've expanded online services. Now you also get answers to DMV or property tax questions without making a telephone call to our office. All you have to do is ask Sonny. Sonny is a new employee who works 24-7, 365 days a year. He's always available to answer your questions. Sonny is our cogbot that uses artificial intelligence to help out when it's convenient for you. It's easy to start a conversation with Sonny. Just visit our website at vctaxcollector.org. Look for the Start Chat button to start a conversation. Again, our website is vctaxcollector.org. We're back. I'm David Hunt along with Kevin Captain, and you're listening to Volusia Today, a public information program brought to you by the County of Volusia. Thanks, Dave. Uh, you know, so we know that there are threats to manatees, and there's more and more news that we're hearing about starvation, seagrass, all the things that are affecting them. One question that, that our division gets frequently is, can we feed them by you know, putting some leftover like romaine lettuce and things like that into the water if they see one. Is that 
kosher? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it is illegal to feed or water them, um, and there's an, a couple of reasons why. And I know there's some confusion right now because of the um, kind of trial basis that was happening down in Brevard where officials were feeding the manatees and people thought that they can do it as well. But that's a very controlled environment, and they're doing it in a very specific way. So for other people, um, say, say it's wintertime and somebody's feeding a manatee out in you know whatever city up here in Volusia County, um, that manatee is going to think that that's a good place for f food, and they're going to go there looking for food, and now they're not in their warmer water gotcha. source where they need to be in the wintertime, so things like that. And um, they are protected under the Manatee Protection Act, or, or Marine Mammal Stranding Act, or <laughs> Got that? <laughs> That's a mouthful. The, yeah, there's a, a bunch of different acts that they're protected under, and it is illegal to harass them or in any way change their natural behaviors. So by feeding them or watering them or doing anything like that, you're actually breaking that law. You know, Dave and I were talking before the show a little bit. Um, I got rid of my boat, thank God, and, and Dave now wants to get a boat. But I remember one time years ago, I was out on the river and a manatee just came right up to the boat. And mm -hmm. I know that that happens frequently to some to boaters. And what are the rules and regs when those types of things happens? I mean, you shouldn't pet them, correct? Or how does that work? No, nope, because that falls underneath that harassment and changing their natural behaviors. Um, so that is considered harassment. And if a law enforcement officer did see you doing that, you can get fined for that. Um, so basically what we say is, and they are very curious animals, and they will sometimes approach boats and kayakers and things like that because they, they want to check it out, you know. So if they do do that, um, if you're in your kayak or on a paddleboard, just take your pat paddle out of the water to you know, show that you're not touching the animal or trying to bother it in any way, um, and also to prevent yourself from accidentally hitting it with the paddle. And it'll check out your kayak or paddleboard and then move along. So just let it do what it wants to do and leave it alone. And if you're out on your boat, just look out for footprints in the water, which is the circular pattern that their tail makes at the surface of the water, so that if you see that, you know there's a manatee in the area, and you can slow down or just go into neutral so you don't accidentally hit the animal. Uh, wearing polarized sunglasses helps to see under the surface of the water a little bit, so that'll help you see them as well, and just obeying those speed zone signs and making sure that uh, you're doing the proper speed limit on the waterways. Good advice. So it, it sounds like there are a lot of threats. A while back, there there was a lot of new. It's kind of I guess it's still, I don't know if it's still going on or but some manatees dying a, a good amount. Like you're talking about the Brevard County feeding. What's going? What's the status of that? Well, what's going on with that? What are some of these threats that they're facing? Is there anything that we can do um, to help? Yeah. So that is a right now we're experiencing an unusual mortality event or UME for manatees. And these UMEs happen to any species, really, where we have a significant die off of the animal for various reasons. This particular UME is due to starvation. The manatees were not getting enough of the vegetation and seagrasses that they need. Um, and so that's why that feeding um, thing was happening, I think, last year. Cora, do you know if it's happening this year as well? It is, yeah, they did start it up again. Okay, so, and that's just to try to help, uh, to try to at least get some animals fed and maybe free up some room in the rehab facilities because there's only a certain amount of space we have to uh, be able to bring these animals in for care. Um, but basically what's happening with the seagrasses is that our water, it's the water quality really. Um, we have so many chemicals that are going into the waterways that are creating these harmful algal blooms because basically if you think about fertilizer, it makes things grow, right? So when you put fer fertilizers into our water, it makes the algae that's already there grow even more. And now that algae blocks out all the, the light getting down to the seagrasses and the other vegetation, and it's killing all that vegetation off. So what we can do is really just think about um, following our fertilizer ordinances mm -hmm. and um, maybe not even using fertilizer if you don't need sure. to, and just be really cautious about uh, what we're using in our yards <laughs> to keep it out of the aquifer, keep it out of our waterways. 
And uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. The, the county's environmental management division has a program called Bee Floridian, and, and you can go on to volusia.org on to that site to learn more about what we can do to, you know, minimize or eliminate the uses of, of fertilizers and things like that. So uh, great, great suggestions. Cora, tell us a little bit about the Save the Manatee Club and, and what you do, because uh, you, you spend, it sounds like, most of your time in Blue Spring. Yeah, absolutely. So Save the Manatee Club, we are a nonprofit and we've been around for about uh, 42 years now. Um, and we do a lot of public outreach and awareness, education, legal advocacy for manatees. Um, and we assist with the research over at Blue Spring State Park, as well as with some of the rescues and releases when that's happening. Um, so uh, my job as the director of multimedia is really doing a lot of outreach, educational videos, managing the social media. But then I also get to work at Blue Spring and assist with the SCAR ID research over there. So that's what I do in the winter time. Um, so yeah, that's uh, and a lot of you know outreach and education goes into all of that. Um, you know what Debbie was saying, like trying to let people know how they can help, uh, what they can do to protect manatees. And everyone's talking right now about the starvation crisis, but there's still so many other threats to manatees too. Watercraft mortalities or rescues for watercraft injuries um, are still very high. Um, you know, entanglements, orphaned calves, those kind of things. I mean, there's just a slew of things that are issues for these guys sure. um, in addition to their starvation. And a lot of these animals are already weakened from, you know, not feeding enough, not finding enough food. Um, so that makes them more prone to uh, getting hit by a boat, for example. So I was uh, I was swimming in Blue Springs, doing a little diving in Blue Springs. Just, it was over the summertime. And... There was a couple of manatees in there. There was a mom and her calf, which was super cool. And there was another manatee swimming around. But at the end of the run, there was a lady in a yellow shirt. And uh, everybody who came up was saying, oh, I think the manatee, the manatee's not moving. I think it's in the stress. And the lady, I don't, I forgot her name, but she was sitting there explaining to everybody. Everybody was so concerned because who's not, uh, manatees are amazing. You, you got to love them. They're just so their faces are so fat they're so curious they just look so happy all the time they're, they're amazing animals so it was the interest of the public and the concern of the public about the manatee safety um the lady at the end was able to kind of just calm everybody down say this is normal this is okay is that part of the save the manatee club or how she looked like she was volunteering I, I, yeah yeah so i'm actually really glad you brought, brought this up because this is actually a collaboration between um save the manatee club Volusia County, the Florida Park Service, and then our fellow research organization, the Clearwater Marine Aquarium Research Institute. So it's the four of us who are coordinating this program together. And we started this a couple of years ago because there was just a need in the summertime um, to kind of provide that education and prevent harassment at Blue Spring when there's uh, people swimming and you know paddle boarding, diving, and there's also manatees in there. So we have a, a group of volunteers that are out there in the summer to help with that. I think it's an amazing program cool. because when you're in there, there's hundreds of people, and then all of a sudden there's a manatee swimming right in the middle of everybody, and just and then it, so it's just an amazing uh, resource for people to kind of just educate. You get a chance to educate about the manatees, and then also protect the manatees at the same time. So I was super impressed with that. The knowledge she was giving to the people when sharing was amazing. So I commend everybody involved with that because yeah. that's an amazing thing for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely, you're listening to Volusia today. We'll take our last break and come back and wrap up our show today about manatees. Stay with us. Do you enjoy helping animals in need? Then why not join our caring and professional team right here at Volusia County Animal Services. We have immediate openings for several high energy candidates interested in becoming a part of our animal care clinic family. As a vet assistant, you'll be doing everything from prepping patients for surgery, as well as assisting in surgery, even recovering those patients. Also prepping log records and helping with our field services and our casework. Vet assistants also help out during our special events, which are extremely popular to the public. Things like pet microchipping and vaccine events, as well as food drives. All of those things are incredibly rewarding, and you'll have the satisfaction of knowing that you're helping pets right here in your community. To get more information, please visit volusia.org or call 386-248-1790. You'll be glad you did. Get ready, it's time for another Volusia County Fire Rescue Fire Safety Tip. Here's some quick tips for fire safety in the kitchen. Never leave your cooking pots unattended. Have a pot lid nearby while you're cooking. If you do have a fire, never put water on it. Put your lid on, take it off the heat, Turn your burner off. 
Go to volusia.org and check out the virtual classroom. It's made for kids, it's awesome, very informative, and it's fun. Check it out at volusia.org. Practicing good fire safety habits saves lives. You can access Volusia County Government online at volusia.org. Listen to county council meetings, pay for permits or tags, or search the property appraisers' databases. Volusia.org is your Volusia County Government information resource. We're back. I'm David Hunt along with Kevin Captain, and you're listening to Volusia Today, a public information program brought to you by the County of Volusia. Thanks, Dave. So we're talking manatees today, and we know that you know they're in trouble, and, and there's... Let's close the show today with what can individuals do? Cora, you are with the Save the Manatee Club. You mentioned it's not for profit. Uh, do you accept volunteers and how can people get more involved? Yes, absolutely. So Save the Manatee Club accepts volunteers. Um, they help us with a whole slew of things. And also what I want to point out is that Save the Manatee Club is a partner of the Manatee Rescue and Rehabilitation Partnership, in short MRP. And that's a big group of organizations involving nonprofits such as Save the Manatee Club, um, federal and state agencies like the FWC, um, facilities like SeaWorld, Zoo Tampa, Jacksonville Zoo, which is where manatees go for rehabilitation. So all of these partners also offer volunteer opportunities to become involved. And I'm kind of handing it over to Deb because I know that the county has volunteer opportunities too for people. Yeah, um, even though the stranding team is just the county employees, we do have a manatee watch program where we train volunteers to document scar patterns and manatee behaviors and send that data into us so that we can get a better understanding of how manatees are using our waterways. So that's definitely a way, or our monofilament recovery and recycling program, you can volunteer to adopt one of the recycling bins out there. Um, and then we also come up with different projects too. Most recently we had volunteers from Volusia County and from Save the Manatee Club go out to marinas and distribute education materials about safe boating and what to do if you see a manatee that might be in distress and things like that. So our volunteers went out and just talked to marinas, handed out that education material, um, also to boat rental places. So we'll do things like that from time to time. So. You know, if you're interested in any of those types of things, contacting um, either our myself or Cora is a, definitely a way to go. And like you were talking, about, it's, it's like full circle, right? So it's like the water quality initiatives and things we can do there. So I feel like we could talk for days about all the things that we offer and, and ways to get involved because we got uh, storm drain marking events, beach cleanups, river yeah. cleanups. Um, a lot of that stuff can be found on volusia.org forward slash litter. There's a lot of initiatives on there. Um, ways to get involved and ways to help. Um, they're there. If anybody's interested, I would definitely encourage them to go to volusia.org or save the manatee club's website and, and save the manatee club also has a, a lot of great resources as well as volusia county on videos and and more information that can be found there so i definitely encourage people to go there is there any final message we want to leave the people with today um involving manatees debbie we'll start with you um yeah so basically i know that a lot of people do care about them and they want to try to save them and you know but then there's others that are like why <laughs> um so but just the closing thought i guess for me would be you know if we lose our manatees we change an entire ecosystem you know it's not just the manatees are that are affected so that lots, could trickle down lots to of consequence things. there for sure yeah, and just keep in mind, they're such resilient animals. So we, as people, complain about so many little things, and they go through so much. So just have kind of a, a wake-up call to see what these animals go through, and everyone can, can help make a difference for them. That's a, a great way of ending it, too, uh, Cora, because it, it's perspective. I mean, definitely, uh, yeah. uh, we, we have a lot of changes, and we're making a lot of changes, but we have to be thinking what we can do as individuals. And, and again, to what Dave said, go to visit volusia.org forward slash uh, uh, environment, litter. Uh, litter or environmental all, management or environment. there's a lot of all resources the programs there. are there yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. so cora debbie thank you for being on the show today with that we'll close volusia today take care stay safe and help your neighbors if you have a comment about volusia today or if there is a topic you would like to hear featured please contact volusia county community information at one 866 345 0345